In the previous lecture, we discussed <coughs> in the previous. In the previous lecture, we used quantum mechanics to help us explain and understand the formation of covalent bonds. Now let's actually use quantum mechanics to help us explain the formation of ionic bonds. Now what exactly is an ionic bond? Well, an ionic bond is basically an extreme case of a covalent bond in which there is an unequal distribution of electrons. So basically, inside an ionic bond, and our electron on the outermost shell of one atom is transferred to a second atom and that creates a positive charge on one atom, a negative charge on the second atom, and the opposite charges attract via electrical forces and this is known as an ionic bond. Now to understand that definition of an ionic bond, let's actually look at one particular example. Let's discuss the ionic bond that exists between sodium and chloride inside sodium chloride molecule. Now, basically, the combination of neutral sodium and neutral chlorine leads to an unequal distribution of electrons. So an electron is transferred from sodium to chlorine and that means that the electron will spend most of its time around the chlorine atom. Now, this unequal electron distribution leads to a positive charge on the sodium and a negative charge on the chlorine atom. Now these two opposite charges will attract one another and this attraction will hold our two atoms as a result of electrical forces and this bond we call the ionic bond. So basically inside an ionic bond an electron is transferred from the outermost shell of one atom to the second atom forming a positive charge on one and a negative charge on the second one. And these opposite charges attract the electrical forces and that's exactly what holds our two atoms and this is known as the ionic bond. Now, let's actually apply quantum mechanics to help us explain why and how ionic bonds actually form and let's begin by discussing the electron configuration for neutral sodium and neutral chlorine. Now, neutral sodium contains 11 protons in the nucleus and 11 electrons found outside that nucleus. So we have 10 electrons found in the innermost shell. We have two in the 1s, two in the 2s, and six in the 2p. And a final electron is found in the outermost shell given by 3s. Now, what about the chlorine? So neutral chlorine basically contains 17 protons in the nucleus and 17 electrons found outside that nucleus. Now, 12 of these electrons are found in the innermost shell. We have two in the 1s, two in the 2s, six in the 2p, and two in the 3s. And the remaining five electrons are found in the outermost electron shell. Now, in quantum mechanics, the way that we actually describe electrons is not by using particles, although sometimes electrons do behave as particles. In quantum mechanics, we normally use wave functions, wave equations that we call wave functions. Now, wave function is given by the Greek letter psi. And if we take the square of the absolute value of the wave function, that gives us the electron distribution or the electron density for that particular electron that creates the electron cloud. Now let's actually describe the electron distribution for sodium and chlorine and let's begin with sodium. So basically sodium has 10 inner electrons and these 10 inner electrons will each have their own wave function and if we combine all these wave functions of these 10 inner electrons they will basically form the following spherically symmetrical closed shell. So basically we take the square of the absolute value of the wave function for sodium and we get the following description. So sodium contains 11 electrons total but 
10 of these electrons form a spherically symmetrical closed shell, while the final electron doesn't have space to enter this region and so therefore is found somewhere outside. And we designate this electron using a particle form, so this is our single electron found in the 1s shell of the sodium atom. And notice it's found outside. Now the question is, what kind of charge does this outermost shell, outermost electron actually feel as a result of the 11 protons in the nucleus of the sodium atom? So, the nucleus of the sodium atom contains a charge of positive 11 because we have 11 protons, each carrying, each carry a positive one charge. Now, since the inner electrons found in this region carry a charge of negative 10 because we have 10 inner electrons, that means that the single outer electron found in the 3s shell only feels a charge of positive positive 1 because positive 11 minus 10 where 10 is the shielding effect as a result of these 10 inner electrons equals positive 1. So this inner or this outer electron in the 3s shell will only feel a charge of positive 1 as a result of our, elect our protons found in the nucleus and that means this outer electron of the sodium will not be held very strongly. Now let's examine our quantum mechanical theory of the chlorine atom. Now in the chlorine case we have 10 inner electrons found in the innermost shell and that means that chlorine will have the following formation. So now chlorine will have 12 inner electrons whose wave functions will combine to form this spherically symmetrical closed shell. So that means we have not one but five outer electrons found outside the following region. Now, four of these electrons will basically form the following two orbitals, the following two electron distributions that will have a donut shape that will extend all the way around this, sphere, uh, this spherical shell. So that means we have four electrons found in the 3p orbital that will form this orbital, this donut shape orbital that comes out of the board and goes into the board. Now we have one electron left over and that single electron will basically fill up the following shape. So we're going to have a dumbbell shape like so but only this side will be filled because we have one electron left over. This bottom portion will be completely empty because we need one more electron to completely fill this 3p orbital. So chlorine contains a charge of positive 17 inside the nucleus inside this red section. And since the inner electrons carry a charge of negative 12, because we have a total of 12 electrons in the innermost shell, the outer electrons feel a net charge of positive 5 because positive 17 minus 12 gives us positive 5. This means that any one of the outer electrons can feel a maximum net charge of positive 5. Now what exactly can we conclude using this information? So what will happen when the sodium comes close to our chlorine atom? So because the outer electrons of chlorine feel a charge of positive 5 while the single outer electron of the sodium atom feels a charge of only positive 1. That means when the sodium comes very close to our chlorine, the outer electron of the sodium shown here will be much more attracted to the chlorine nucleus than to the sodium nucleus. Because the chlorine nucleus will basically have a net charge of positive 5, while the sodium nucleus will only carry a net charge of positive 1. 
So when the electron transfers to chlorine, when the sodium atom comes close, this electron will basically transfer to this orbital, filling this orbital, and this electron will spend most of its time inside this orbital. The sodium will develop a net positive charge, while the chlorine will develop a net negative charge. So now we have this electron spending most of its time here, so this sodium sodium atom has only 10 electrons and 11 protons, so it has a partial charge or a net charge of positive 1, this has a charge of negative 1, and these opposite charges will attract one another as a result of the negative and positive charge, so as a result of our electrical forces, and that is exactly what will hold our two atoms together. And this type of bond is known as an ionic bond. And of course, when this actually takes place, the energy of this molecule will be lower than the combined energy of the sodium and the chlorine atom. And this is what we know as an ionic bond.